Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our weekly webinar hosted by HR Talk, Carl and myself, Tidi Mueleso. In today's webinar, please let me know if you guys can hear me. I can hear you, Tidi. Yeah, thank you very much. OK, in today's webinar, we're going to be unpacking what is ESS. Of course, the cost of ESS. How does ESS work to make our life easier within the organization? Prons and cons of ESS. And of course, we're going to go do some demo for you guys. ESS consists out of two things, which is ESS and MSS. ESS is employee self-service, while MSS is manager self-service. Not everybody within the organization must have MSS. It's either the directors or the, management, the managers of the company so that they could be able to approve their other employees' leave. It's as little as 22 and 50 per month per employee, excluding VAT. One huge advantage of it, it's mobile friendly. Let's say, for example, your company is one of those companies that are very strict and they'll say to you, for you to take leave, it needs to be approved. And you already took two days and you need one for some certain reasons. Because it's mobile friendly, what you're going to do is just take your phone and apply it on your phone and your line manager is going to be able to get it. And you're also going to get the notifications saying that you request for your leave, they're able to approve your leave. Remember, we do not need any app for this. We just send you a link and you'll be able to go through your ESS. Without wasting any time, Carl is going to go through with you guys the benefit of using ESS. Over to you, Carl. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome this morning. Sure, CD, that was a little bit quicker than I thought. I thought I still had about three or four <laughs> minutes to be able to think about what I needed to say this morning. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to allow CD to go through the actual demo and show you what the ESS looks like. Um, but in essence, the, the primary goal of, of employee self-service in any sort of situation is simply to allow the employees to have better access to their own information, as well as streamlining your processes uh, to eliminate or reduce the number of queries you have uh, to allow your, your staff to get their information easier. And of course, always to make sure that you have the most accurate information that is humanly possible at that, you know, at any stage in time. So with the employee self-service, and uh, we'll get into the demo of it, of where it all happens in a few moments, is we can control access at a various various number of levels. So we can do it by cost center. We could do it, um, yeah, like I say, by various number of, of different kinds of levels. We'd obviously just need to discuss which level works best for your company. We can allow employees to either view or to be able to view and edit their information. So for argument's sake, you could allow somebody to edit their address, but not necessarily their bank account details. So that also comes into play as well. With allowing the employees access to their own information, it does allow you to have an improved employee engagement. In other words, they're more likely to update their information with you. They're more likely to engage when there is stuff that is incorrect. And that obviously leads you into having better information on your system. Better information in your system means you're less likely to pick up problems with Poppy, uh, with the Poppy Act and those kinds of fun bits and pieces. In theory, you will also receive reduced number of queries because people won't be phoning and saying, please, can I have three months pay slips? I need to go for a bank loan. They can get that directly from the system. I lost my IRP file from last year. I need to submit my tax return. Anybody who's worked in payroll for any length of time knows that that's a constant query around the date that um, IRP files are due for the individuals, I mean. So in theory, it reduces the number of queries, but in, in all reality, what we do notice is that there's a slight increase in the, the number of queries when you implement, but that tapers off significantly as the process rolls out and people become more comfortable in going and getting their own information. So it does reduce your queries in the long term, but in short term, we do see that there's a little spark sometimes. As far as your processes are concerned, if we can automate the processes like taking leave so nobody's got a manual form anymore, forms don't get lost, it's more accurate, and you can also then 
utilize that time to analyze did everybody actually fill in their leave forms did they do what they were meant to do um, and your line managers can be involved there as well to do the approvals at the end of the day the line managers are the guys who will know if somebody's actually at work or if that person actually is, a, is in a position to be able to take leave when we look at some of the other processes, we can also do some interesting bits and pieces around performance appraisals. So if you do use that area of the system, we can also do the performance appraisals through the ESS. Um, that area is not as well utilized as what it could be, but it is available. Um, but more importantly, or I feel more importantly than that, is the ability for us to be able to do claims online. Now, what I mean by that is that if somebody has perhaps worked a little bit of overtime, they can fill in the request for their overtime to be paid, depending on what your process is and how you've decided to set that up. You would be able to, at that stage, go through and authorize that request for payment and either allow it to go directly through payroll or then become part of the input for payroll. That can be done with things like overtime, with commission requests, um, with travel claims, all of those sorts of things where there would normally be a very manual intervention, somebody filling in a form, that sort of thing. If you wanted to maintain a high level of control, you could also ask them then to attach those documentations to your actual claim so that the person authorizing the claim would still have that same level of seeing the actual physical claim, perhaps some receipts, that kind of fun stuff. And that is pretty much all that I have to say around the pros of the employee self-service. And then, of course, there's always cons with things. Nothing is nothing is free, as they say. So obviously, the, there's a con. There is a slight increase in your costing. The access to ESS is online so we do need to have an internet you know internet access it doesn't use a lot of data at all um, it is mobile friendly it does run perfectly fine on somebody's cell phone so it all runs you know it uses very little data it's very small and because you're not having to download an app it's not sitting on your phone all the time and that primarily is all the cons the the system works well the um, support for it. Uh, Chidi and her team are, are very good at making sure that things get done as they're meant to be done. And um, yeah, the, the process in itself is actually fairly straightforward. Chidi, back to you for our demo. Thank you, Carl. Uh, before I do demo, I just want to explain also in, uh, in terms of external access, because most of the people will ask me, what is this, this external access? Before I go there, please bear in mind that you cannot report to more than one person. And on the external one, let's say, for example, your company is one of those companies with one, one, one director and then one HR manager, and everybody reports to one director. For the company's sake, the director must also put on their leave. So nobody's going to authorize their leave because everybody's reporting under the director's manager. Uh, sorry, under the director. So that's when the external comes in. We are going to give the HR manager the external access, but not with the email address that is already on the system. Let's say the company is like Waterloo. So it's going to be hr at waterloo.co.za because that is already on the system. So what we're going to do, we're just going to say Waterloo 1 at hr.co.za. In that way, we're going to give the HR manager access so that they could be able to approve the, the director's leave. Remember, on the external one, you only approve leave. Well, I doubt that the, 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 manager, the director will ask you to apply for the leave, but you only approve leave or apply for leave, nothing more. If you want to then do everything, getting, downloading your payslip and all of that, you log into your actual ESS. OK, this is how our demo looks like. I'm just going to log in again so that I show you guys how it actually looks. Mm. 
this is how our farm page looks. Of course, it's your email address, password, and then login. Remember, the only time you can go to forgot password is when this email address we have here is the one that you've registered with in or at our payroll at our payroll page. So if you feel like you want to change your email address, please inform me. I'll inform the payroll so that we we be able to change this. In that way, we'll send you one time password, and then you're going to be able to to change it anytime you want. So when you log in, this is how it looks. Of course, dashboard, my voice, employees information, my people, companies information, financial, leave management, appraisals, payment request, loans and savings, gift, calendar, policies and procedures. Remember, you don't have to have all of this. Other companies will just say, OK, we just want employees information, my people, financial, leave management, that's it. But I'll go through everything so that you understand how it works. Of course, dashboard is more like summary of your ESS. As you can see here, it's welcome, your name, and then your employee number, and then whoever that you're reporting to is going to be written here. And then if you have people that report under you, remember I said if you have MSS, that's where people are going to report under you. Then you're going to see the dates of people that are reporting under you. And of course, a special date is whatever that's going on within the organization or our public holidays in South Africa. And when you look here, it's also the summary of your leave, as I've said in the beginning. My voice. Most of the companies, when it comes to Messenger, we use Teams to communicate within the organization. So um, if you want to use it, you can use it. But most of the time, if you we we use it, we, we normally use the uh, the teams and here on call out. Let's say something happened within the organization and you didn't like it. You can just literally comes come here and then come on next report whatever that happened. If you don't want people to know that it's you who reported that you just come here. You just submit without your details or you, if you want to to submit with your details, of course, you'll do that. And then here on think out. Let's say, for example, you have this nice idea within the organization that you want to maybe have fundraising and that fundraising you want to do some Brown Friday. You just come in and say, you know what? I feel like we need to have paid this money. We have Brian and then in that way, we're going to give to some organization or to some charity. Just come in and put whatever that you want to put and then submit to your line manager and then they'll discuss it, of course. And then here on shout out, if there's an employee within the organization, that is working very hard and then you of course want to praise them you just write whatever here on next and then you also submit it your line manager is going to get all of that in employees information of course i'm not going to go through it because you can see it's your personal information banking details contact information language preference address as well as your spouse's information my people Remember, I said in the beginning, not everybody must have MSS. Only people that only directors or the line manager of the organization can have this. So now if you let's say Cynthia, because I have Cynthia here, Cynthia has said, can you please apply for me because I don't have my PC or I don't have nice connection on my side. So you could literally select here on Cynthia. Because this is a demo, then you're going to come here on leave management and apply for her. Okay, let me try and log in again. Sorry about that. CD, that was because you selected an employee who didn't have access to those yes. um, to those levels. So you just needed yes. to go back to my people and go and select yourself and you would have been back. Thank you, Carl. And then of course here it's the company's information. Basic information about the company and then the phone book. I'm not going to go through that as well. And then financials. If you want to download your pay slip, you just come here. Whenever you started within the organization, can you see it's July and you generate it, then you'll be able to get it wherever you save it. Remember that our 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 payslip are password protected. 
it's according to the company how they want it. But if you feel like, okay, my ID number is not working, but I know that is the ID number, just contact me. I'll tell the payroll team, or you can contact the payroll team, tell them that I cannot log in because of this. Maybe they did not put the EO ID number and so forth. That also goes with the tax certificate. And then on the leave management, when you come here, when you want to apply for leave, let's say, for example, you want to apply for annual leave. And then you just want to take this 23rd. Can you see here automatically it's it's one? So if you want to only want to take half a day, just come and click half a day and then you update it. As soon as you update it, your line manager is going to receive a notification that says request and you're also going to get that notification that says request. So in that way, your manager is going to be able to approve it. As soon as your line manager approves your leave, you're also going to get the notification that says your leave has been approved or declined and then your line manager is also going to get it. I remember I had this client saying that they did not get the notification. The reason why you don't get that notification, maybe because on our payroll side, we don't have your email address. So please make sure that the email address is there so that when you apply, yes, I, I could have your email address on ESS, but ESS works with payroll. So if I don't have that email address on the payroll side, you're not going to be able to get the notification. And then this one as well is when you're applying for seek leave. Of course, you're going to include all your details, doctor's information, and then if your company also wants the sick note, you're just going to come here and touch the sick note, and then you're going to be able to update it. As I said it, you want to get the notification. Your line manager is going to get the notification that you've requested. As soon as they approve it, you're also going to get the notification that it has been approved or declined. When you come here, you're going to see that's the leave balances. You're just going to go through your leave balance. And then, of course, here's the leave history, leave adjustment. If you want to extract all of your annual leave, you're going to generate it here. All of your sick leave, you're, of course, going to generate it here. Appraisals, it's the current appraisals and, of course, the history of it. Payment request, Kyle is going to go through with that. I'm not going to go through with that so that you're going to be able to understand more. And then if your company is one of those companies that are doing loans and savings, everything also you're going to get it here when you apply for your loan, the loan history, when you apply for your savings, the savings history. As well here, if your company is giving you guys gift, you just want to keep it in your profile, is you're also going to do that. And then the calendar is whatever that we have within the our calendar in South Africa, or if there's an anniversary of the company or the, the anniversary of whoever is it within the organization, everything's going to be written here. And then lastly, it's going to be the policies and procedures. Remember, for you to, to download here is whatever that you've sent to our payroll team, and then they upload it so you're going to be able to Download it here, but there is a way that we can give you access as the company to upload policies for yourself so that people could be people within the organization could be able to download it. And the very the, the last one that people always ask me, okay, this person has applied for leave and I cannot see where I'm going to be able to approve the leave. If you can see here on top, there's a bell up there. So on this bill, normally if somebody applies for their leave, it's going to write here, whoever applied for leave, either it's reject or accept. So you're just going to come and then accept it or reject because this one is a demo, we've already done that. So you're just going to come and say accept or decline. As soon as you do that, the line, your line manager is getting it and the person that applied for leave is also going to get it. This is how ESS work. It's so easy and it's just straightforward. Over to you, Carl. Thank you, Chidi. I'm just going to steal the share for a moment or two. Uh, make sure I get the right one. Don't want to be just sharing the wrong screens. 
Okay, so Shidi showed you how to log in. Oh, sorry, my screen just went blank. Give me a second while my machine wakes up and comes back to life. There we go. Um, Shidi or Candice, can you guys see the screen? Now it's on. Thanks, Carl. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So one of the primary things that we like to be able to use this for is to be able to keep everybody's information current. So they have the, the personal information, you know, address and all that sort of fun stuff. They can fill in all that information or they can um, at least view it if you don't want them to be able to update. But we also have the contact information and this becomes really useful in case something happens to a member of staff. You can have them here put in a next of kin detail or uh, in case of emergency contact um, information so that you have additional contact information for your staff in case something happens. So that's fairly useful for us to have as well. Um, so that the other one was banking details. The individual can review what their current banking details are, as well as see the history of what their banking details have been. You can allow people to add their own banking details or to, to change their details. Everybody has um, varying uh, tolerances for that in that uh, ability. So you, whatever works for you, the, the system can handle any of those sort of fun bits and pieces. The gifts that CD touched on was an interesting one, and this has to do more with SARS than with your company per se. Um, if your employees are receiving gifts from either suppliers or from um, clients, they really do need to log them. SARS are quite adamant, um, and it was fairly popular a few years ago that when people did things like sign new long term rental agreements, that the rental agreement seller would give tickets to sporting events or you know four weekends away and that sort of thing and SARS has clamped down very seriously on that and that they do need you do need to log that you also it would be useful to know in case there's some sort of inappropriate relationship developing between your staff and um, your potentially your suppliers or your clients payment requests Barring leave is probably the most useful or the most heavily utilized part of the system. And this is, as we said earlier, where the person can come in and say, well, I've got a business expense claim. What was it? Well, I did whatever it is. I took this person to lunch, I did that, I did the following things, and it has a value of 100 Rand. Now, as soon as I save that, it will immediately send the notification like the leave to the line manager to be approved and it can then be resolved as such. Your line manager would then receive a notification. So on top here, they would grab the notification and they could then either approve or decline it. And one other thing is we have a nice little, they call a burger menu or a down on. So all of the tiles that you have, if you don't like the navigation style with tiles, you can use the menu structure as well to navigate to any of your screens. And that's it. Uh, CD, back to you. Thank you, Carl. Um, that's how ESS works. As I said, it's simple and it's very easy. And I think it's what we like literally used to because we're always on our phones every day. So if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to us and be able to answer everything that you have for us. Krista, I see your hand raised. If you'd like to unmute or type your question. Uh, good morning, Carl. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I just want to quickly find out, does your ESS um, application work with your own payroll software or does it integrate with, for example, Sage, VIP, Premier and such? OK, so this this one that we've demoed today is the proprietary uh, Cyberworks one, but Big Sage have their own SSS, they call it, as a um, yeah, self-service 
uh, or they if you're in Sage 300, they call it Web SS. So if you're looking for something specifically for the Sage products, either the VIP or the um, SCBPP, I hope I get the acronym right, um, that's uh, SSS. And then if you're talking about Sage 300 people, then that's Web SS. Um, so that's uh, that's from that side. Um, we can definitely help you with that if you would like uh, some assistance on that. But this one is is for the CyberWorks payroll. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. Thank you. Excellent. Um, I see a question from Angela. I think it was um, from within. Uh, where would you be able to run a full report of all employees leave taken and approved? Um, Angela, that would normally be run from the main payroll system as the individuals who would you be using at the MSS side would only be able to report on their own staff members. So the people who do our direct reports to them. If you were looking for a full report across the entire company, all departments, areas, that would be run from the primary payroll system and um, that in itself, we can allow access to, so it's not um, it's not locked down. You're able to get access to that as well. Um, Angela, would you like me to give you a call after this for us to discuss that? Excellent. Uh, excellent. Uh, Nelly Siwe, um, I am hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, just want to check if I, there is possible to get one leave history report for all my people at once. Within the payroll software, yes. Within ESS, no, unless all of those people are reporting to you directly. Um, that's that, that's where we would do that kind of reporting. Um, CD, please, uh, if you don't mind, just to make sure we get notes on this. Um, Christo, I'm very happy. I will get Candice or, or CD to give you a shout um, and we can set up some time separate uh, to this and then we can have a discussion around that. That would be great. Uh, very easy to, to give you a quick overview of that as well. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, are there any other are there any further questions or can we allow you to get on with your day? I know that everybody's busy. It's an interesting time of the year with uh, WCA due and or starting to become due, workman's comp starting to become due um, and tax certificates needing to start getting prepared as well as all your month end standard reporting. Uh, let's see, we can the employee apply for leave credit on ESS. When you're saying a leave credit, I'm assuming you mean go into a negative balance. In other words, I have one day leave due to me, but I want to take two days. That is dependent on your. Um, that would depend on your company's rules, so that's set up in configuration. Uh, so if you allowed that or you've allowed it to go into minus one, let's say, then yes, they would be able to. If you've said it's a hard no, that the zero is the absolute lowest balance that someone can have, even if they are a decimal off, they won't be able to get that leave. Um, and then moving on to Christo. Sorry, there's so many questions or jumping down now. I am. Uh, there we go. Chidi has um, has answered your your query there, Christo. Thank you. Um, absolute pleasure for those who said thank you. And Angela, I will give you a call directly after this, and then we can quickly chat about that. It appears our questions have all dried up. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a lovely rest of your day. And I think this will conclude our um, webinar for this morning.